Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. You know, a lot of companies, they really like this part right here. They like to get paid. And of course we do too. But more than that, we want to solve that problem so that they never have to have us come back or have anyone else come back. And that's what we do on every job. This job is in a little town called Stanley, Stanley, North Carolina. And the crawl space had been leaking since it was built, since day one. And they couldn't find anyone to solve the problem. Let's take a look. It's been raining this morning, and you can see just within a few hours, water starts to run down along the footers here. You can see it all over here. Remember, this crawl space has been flooding since it was built. And she had so many people come out here and try to look at this and no one would touch it. But it's really a straightforward job. So we're going to start by digging the, the hole for the sump basin. And we're going to put all that dirt into the buckets, take it out, and haul it around to the side of the house where we'll grade it out. Notice all the efflorescence on this wall. This crawl space has been flooding for so many years and no one would come in here and fix this problem. Many questions about should you waterproof the interior or the exterior well i just posted a video where we were up in maryland and you saw the stress crack that's the time that we want to waterproof on the outside so we've got a really nice good clean deep hole for our pit we just drop our pit down in there and you notice that i put the inlet on this side to allow you know for expansion to bring a new footer tile which is a gravel perforated pipe down into the pit because remember that we've got water up there and he may want to put a footer tile that comes along the footer the inside perimeter and bring that right over here to the pit so next we're going to go ahead and core through this foundation wall this is one brick thick and then there's two block that total eight inches thick so we're going to go through about 12 inches and our core drill is only eight inches deep so we're going to have to go through from the other side i already made the measurements i want to come through right here pouring the foundation wall is so important this allows us to bring the inch and a half pvc pipe up and out through the wall and let it discharge outside the hammer drill makes very quick work of this, and you can rent one of these from your local tool rental for about $50 to $70 for you know half a day, and it will make this so nice and, and look aesthetically correct. So next, we'll go ahead and plumb from the sump basin and pump out through the wall. So we've got our discharge line coming through the wall, and now we're ready to go ahead and put the sump pit back in here. You can see we're getting some water down here, a lot of water, which is really good. Next, we're going to go ahead and set our sump pump down into the pit. This pump has a 10-foot cord, so we've got plenty to work with here. Make sure it sets squarely on the bottom. We're going to be plumbing from this discharge pipe over to, over to the sump pump, the riser. So let's go ahead and cut a few pieces of pipe. Okay, so now we're ready to plumb this up. Remember, we're going to have to put our no-hub band on here. So let's go ahead and hook up the check valve first. Make sure that you get all the way into that rubber piece. Then we want to loosen up our clamp a little bit. Slide it down over the hard rubber, and we're going to tighten that up with a 5 16 inch drill bit. It's as tight as that drill can make it. Now we're ready to put our 90 on. But let's take a look. You can see our pump sitting in the bottom of the pit. That's going to come up. We'll put a 90 on here and this is going to fit perfectly together. So let's go ahead and glue that last piece together. We're ready for our Oatly medium bond cement. Put that on there. Now all we're going to do is just push down on the pump because the check valve can come apart a little bit. Push that right together. There we go. 
through the wall, out, and outside here, you can see the discharge comes down and just we're just splashing it out on the ground away from the house. Small base of gravel down in the bottom of the footer tile, or the perimeter tile, the trench that we're going to lay our perforated pipe in. And we're going to go ahead and connect that right here to the nipple that we cut off. That brings the water right into the sump pit. The way we do that, real simple, we just go ahead and slice the pipe a few inches, squeeze it together real tight, and then we slide it right into the hole. Want it to stick out uh, a couple inches is good. Now we can lay the rest of this pipe down in the trench and cover it with gravel and we'll be done inside. Okay, so we've got everything installed. We're gonna go ahead and cover with gravel. You can see our sump pump down in the sump basin. Comes up, check valve, arrow pointing upwards. You can see that. Comes up, comes out through the discharge. We're gonna go outside we're going to go outside and plumb that down to the ground and let it splash out. That's what we're doing here today. You can see our, our, our footer tile, our perforated pipe, comes into the sump pit. Got a small base of gravel. Paul's getting ready to cut that off at the other end, and then we'll cover that up with gravel. This is number 67 stone, and it is the best stone for the perimeter drain, the foundation drain. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains. Reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.